what uh, Buhari should be doing in 2018. Uh, what would you like um, the president to be doing at this particular time of the year? And of course, uh, what your expectations of him are and uh, the critical sectors, the critical issues that he should be tackling. I uh, would like to know uh, your, uh, your view, uh, your, you know, your thoughts on this one. So uh, if uh, you have something to say, if you have um, a comment, so please feel free uh, to do that on the show. I'm announcing it early so you can uh, actually be a part of this conversation. Uh, just uh, send us a message on the numbers now, scroll in on your screen or interact with us on our various uh, social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, using the hashtag Galaxy Today. Once again, what uh, Buhari should do in 2018. Welcome to the show. My name is Justin. Academia. And no doubt, I'm Uche Onyekuruji. Like you rightly said, once again, Happy New Year and welcome to Galaxy Today. As you rightly said, we'll be looking at what Buhari should be doing in 2018. And um, as usual, we'll have a guest in the studio, a legal practitioner and person of Joe Uwokidi. Good morning, sir, and welcome to Galaxy Today. Good morning, today. and good morning, viewers. Happy New Year to Happy everybody. Happy New Year to you, well, too. 2018, finally. Yes. <laughs> give up glory to God. It's been a long time, God. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. so much advertised and whatever. So here it is. Exactly. So yes. we're looking at what Bari should be doing in 2018. Your own opinion. What do you think? What would you say he should be looking at, or what are the things he should be looking at? Um, if I'm um, for me, uh, the president has a narrow task this 2018. I mean, something so crucial because um, the state of the economy is not in good shape. And uh, what actually happened within the tail end of the year, I mean, the, the surfacing of scarcity of fuel and um, other issues. Mm -hmm. uh, the president is supposed to know that it is quite a big embarrassment to the nation. Mm -hmm. But at this level, at this stage, that um, no refinery is actually working. Mm -hmm. We cannot boost off sustainable supply of the commonest product mm. that determines movement, determines the flow of crucial activities and engagements in our nation. Mm. So it was like 18, the president has a lot to look into. When I, 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 list, I, I read the address and listened to the address, he mentioned so many issues and they are, they are just like promises. Mm. He made mention of a uh, railway that will cut across the whole nation, Lagos to to Kanu, Kanu to Kaduna, Kaduna to Abuja, Abuja to Medugri, Medugri to Akaton, Shatu Newi, Newi to Patako, Patako to almost every part of Nigeria. These are mere wishes. How long have we gone in, 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 in taking care of that? But that now we stand there. Even if you have to achieve all these things. But there are crucial issues, there are crucial challenges. The level of our foreign currency is a very, very funny one, but it's, it's a, a, a reality before us. That if you start saving one, one naira from yesterday, at the end of this year, we only save one, we get one, only one dollar. 365 days in a year, a 365 naira makes one dollar. So the whole of your savings from January to December 2018 will give you only one dollar. And, 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 and we're not looking at that. You're saving one thousand naira every day, at the end of the year, you get only one thousand dollars. Okay, so it's done that. So the president should first and foremost look into this fuel crisis, fuel okay. issue. Although, although the fuel crisis, uh, one angle we should look at it is that uh, I mean, uh, a lot of people have actually reacted to that. What well, that his speech, I know that uh, specifically. Uh, Nobel laureate uh, Professor Olesho Inkata uh, said he should stop uh, you know, uh, trading blames. Uh, but he said that he uh, is going to make sure that those who are directly involved in the, the, the what uh, Nigerians have to suffer for the yield time, they are going to be punished. Uh, don't you think it's a step in the, direction, in the right direction? Uh, we, it, it's, it's applaudable if he can do that. Because somebody was just uh, talking about shifting blames, shifting blames, and shifting mm -hmm. blames. You don't shift blame for a government that you've actually been at the helm of a phase for close to three years. By 2019, we'll be talking about fresh election. And you're still shifting blames. These are the people we appointed. Even if you're not the one appointed, then you have the capacity under the constitution as the chief executive officer of the federation to dissolve the boards, to appoint new ones, to release some other his duties, to even uh, empower the agencies responsible with the capacity to deal with anybody that is found wanting in his or her uh, discharge of duties to be to be dealt with adequately we have not seen that even though that how you have relief of their duties they've not been prosecuted 
Even the former class between DSS and DSC, when they wanted to arrest some people that were uh, relieved of their duties, nothing happened. Up till now, we have not heard about that again. The man has not been okay, has not been prosecuted. The people that attempted to arrest him, they thought the minor gate at the rest of them. What has been done? So the president cannot be, my judges can no longer believe him. I'm telling you straight away that Nigerians no longer believe the president. Okay. The Buhari that they, they thought they can believe, I mean, I'm so sorry. He has actually deviated, he has actually disappointed them in some crucial areas that we thought that he would come up with action. Speaking okay, of, sir. okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay sorry. Then I like the fact that you're saying that something should be done, but you, aside of looking at um, the area of um, roads, like you said, the road and system, and um, also looking at him dealing with um, the um, fuel people, who, I mean, those who are behind this, of course, scarcity. Do you not think that there are other specific areas that should be looked upon? I mean, for this year, like education. It's education. Our education is becoming quite deplorable. It's becoming something that a, a, a Nigerian can no longer be proud of. I mean, coming up to compete competently and favorable with students from other other climes and other other civilized societies. And each passing day, we keep on witnessing a kind of depreciation in our standard of education. That even when you engage people in school, you'll be wondering, is it the same thing that, the same knowledge you acquired mm -hmm. that, this, that these guys are exposed to? Mm -hmm. And then what is the government doing? They kept on sending their children abroad. There was abroad, graduating every day on social media. You, you know, they, even um, the, the MBA chairman, Mahmoud, has the guts to post the, the picture of the, of the, of the daughter in London. The APC chairman of Yogun celebrated in so Richard Sokota celebrated in so many of them celebrating people. So we should look into our education sir, because whether we like it or not, the society is the product of the people. Mm -hmm. If you have low quality people coming, turning out, turning them out of our various universities and places of higher of higher learning, they will take up the society and take up leadership tomorrow. And what are they going to give? I was telling someone that my godfather, my baptismal father, once told me. That when they were at the University of Nigeria, they have access to free meal. Was even asking me how many were in, in a room there. I told him he shouted. He said, How come? But I'm telling you, it has multiplied even now. Some places not even have a place to live again. It was, I told him it was an, you know, I said it was an aberration for a student to live off campus. Yeah. You, did, you do it as a choice, but it wasn't in vogue because 95% of students are in the hostel. The person sits in the hostel and presume that every student will see it. Lecture my end by five, they'll come and pay something in the evening in the hostels that someone is picking up in the morning around eight. They don't care whether you don't see because they believe everybody's there. But this is all under the practice now. What are we doing to bring up a standard of education? How much have we voted into our education? How are we ensuring that they have facilities to work on? Facilities that will enable them to, I mean, produce graduates, produce quality students that will take up leadership positions and then drive our economy and drive our nation. If people that are, are quite unfortunate and very, very regrettable that the bulk of people manning their face of the nation now, how do we have those that education system favor, either through scholarship, either through, or through one, of, well, one, one, two, one, one incentive or the other, but now they are the ones running down our education system. So the president should look into that direction because look at is it not recently that Gola or whatever launched or something in the space and whatever are we thinking of that? All right, okay, you know? okay, fine. A uh, fallout of um, what he said yesterday as per what uh, the outlook for 2018 would be uh, was that of restructuring. Although a lot of people have come out to say uh, to I um, you know to tackle him, Fanny uh, Ferris uh, South Mid uh, South Middle uh, Belt, and of course uh, the um, Professor Loretta. Um, well, they show Inca. But the thing is that uh, the APC has also come out to say that um, Buhari did not reject restructuring. Well, what he was saying was that uh, uh, changing from one form of the lead or leadership uh, of government to another might take time. But do you really think uh, re restructuring is one of the things that he should possibly consider in 2018? For me, uh, the clamor for restructuring is long overdue. Because if you look at the system, the system is not working. Nigerians are not giving out their best. To be honest with you, you don't have resources, you don't have potentials, you don't harness. Mm. There are so many things stunting the growth of talents reposed in so many people in Nigeria. For instance, the quota system. For instance, so many cut off. For instance, this way of uh, I mean, engaging people. I I'm so sorry to say, if you look at the cut off marks in the, in the Nigerian universities and unity schools, then you look at the workforce, you see a different thing. You'll be asking yourself, all these brilliant students that has scored all this mass there. They've been they've been swallowed. The system actually choked them up. They couldn't they couldn't 
produce. They couldn't manifest their talents. They couldn't replicate that intellectual endowment that they acquired in university into the, into the society. Because in one word, the system just took them. Then Nigeria is, is a kind of country that people, is, is, is populated by people of so many, of diverse culture, diverse uh, religion, diverse tribe, diverse everything. And each tribe is unique in its own kind of activity, in its own kind of affair. But bringing them together and fusing them and making them like function collectively has been a very big enigma. And it has been translated to stunted development and growth. If we look back to, if we can go back to what was obtainable in the, in the past, when we are, uh, 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 although I was not born then, but from what I read, mm -hmm. when we had the uh, South, uh, Western, Eastern, I mean, they recorded a kind of patriotism, a kind of uh, development, a kind of good governance that each, each region tried to uh, 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 outdo the other region. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, upon that, we have a central government that, that was regulating the affairs and the activities of these regions. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that Nigeria waits is well. Mm -hmm. This our system is encouraging indolence. It's encouraging. A, 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 a kind of a kind of laziness okay. because if you look at it in the north and all the all the lands they have there all the assets they have to agriculture and all the things they have what, what, can you see produce that pyramid we have there before now we can't see them look at pamoye in malaysia and the rest of them pamoye or whatever i see they are they are, they are oh, right, we'll we come back to you but we but just have that. to quickly go to um ibadon now where we have uh our comrade uh wali akiremi the sanu chairman are standing by he's also uh a social commentator, a commentator is the chairman of Sano from the University of Ibadan. Uh, many thanks for joining us on Galaxy today. Uh, we're looking at um, what the president should be doing, uh, President Muhammad Buhari should be doing in 2018 uh, as a way of, um, you, know, uh, you know, setting agenda for the new year. In his speech, uh, before, before we even uh, start talking here in the studio, we had a pre-chat and uh, uh, we mentioned that um, the talk of um, Fulani Hetzman was not included uh, in uh, his New Year broadcast. Uh, don't you think it's one area the president should really look into, uh, going by the fact that there was even um, some crisis on Christmas Day in Southern Kaduna? Good morning. Uh, I want to say that uh, it was an omission that is not. Uh, uh, very, very um, going down well with uh, an average Nigerian, you know. This is a serious security challenge. And more importantly, that people are suspecting um, some kind of um, sentiment, you know, from the, go from the president, you know, towards the Fulani headsmen. When you look at the AFOC they have wrecked on the system, that as there is exactly a difference, you know, even if some people want to say that there, there, there are differences, but there is hardly a difference between the Fulani headsmen and the Boko Haram people. H Hello? Hello? Go ahead. There's hardly a difference between the uh, Boko Haram people and the... Uh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, now, there's hardly a difference between um, the Boko Haram uh, people and the uh, Fulani headsmen. They are wrecking, wrecking a fork throughout the country. And the government should do so, something about it. Not only that government should do something, what the government will do must be very tangible. You know, the, the research says that, you know, having a place where uh, these people will be gathered is going to even give them more profits than the way they run their businesses. Is it that the government is actually, uh, you know, harboring these people or what? So that's, that was omitted in his speech, which was very, very conspicuous. Very, very conspicuous. The government needs to do something about it. You are from the education sector. Uh, last year, 2017, there were uh, lots of um, crises. In the education sector, we saw uh, myriads of uh, uh, strikes, uh, non-academic staff union, academic staff union, and all of that. Uh, precisely in 2018, how do we move forward? It, that, that's a very good question. You know, it is most unfortunate that even as we speak now, the non-teaching members of staff in the university system are on strike. And I want to tell you what happened at the last time we met with the government, which was uh, uh, about uh, the third week of December. You know, the government party admitted that they are very, that they have not treated the matters, you know, the best of ways, you know, uh, which is not good. Uh, most of the things that, um, you know, uh, uh, led to this issue 
Ah, something that we should be able to handle amicably. Look at the last time the government tried to like uh, do something about 2009 agreement. You know, it was tilted in such a way that it was obvious they wanted to cause chaos in the university system. That's that. Not only that, we have an agreement with the government, the, all the unions that has to do with the teachers of the uh, staff school in the universities. You will not believe that the government took us to court and at the NIC, we got judgment in our favor. And it's over two years, I mean, it's over one year now. Government is trying to play politics with that. It does not make a government look responsible. Our argument is this. If we want a university system that is going to compete with the best in the world, we must, you know, stop the issues that will always lead to strikes and agitation in the university. If you don't have stability, there is no way we are going to compete with the best. It is not in the best interest of either the workers, the students, the teachers, the nation as a whole, you know, for us to be going on strike every now and then. Government should just sit down together with us. Sometimes, I think about three years ago, there was one educational summit that, you know, uh, was um, actually conducted by the um, uh, tertiary institutions in Nigeria. In fact, people from overseas were invited. There were papers delivered. There were researches. There were conclusions that could help the federal government. They are not looking into all this. So we are hopeful that, you know, very early this, this, this month, government is going to sit down with us so that we can move forward. Going on strike every now and then is not going to go well for our educational system in this country. I mean, um, some people are reacting to what he should be doing for 2018. And someone said that President Buhari should take off the garment of aloofness and slow speed. He needs a new garment that would make him proactive instead of merely reactive. There are far too many cases of delayed action or inaction under his watch. Now, I want you to react to this. Do you really think that um, probably his temperament has a way of um, um, not taking Nigeria to the promised land, like we say? What, what, what the truth that we all must manage is that uh, there was a reason why we voted Bari, and we shouldn't ask for too much. We shouldn't push him too much. Yes, he's our president, and he must give us all the best. But there is a best to which your ability can afford. And I will say this. This is not Buhari of 1983-84. You can, you, can, you, you can just imagine how old the man is. You know, the basic thing is that it is obvious that he is not as agile as uh, we would have loved him to be. But in fairness to him, we still see some level of uh, integrity that we voted for in him. He has a vice president that an average Nigeria is not in doubt of his ability, his integrity, and intellectual prowess. So we have a team that is not bad. Yes, the president is largely uh, reactive, but I think what he needs to do is that he needs to see that again. With the, with the people, some of the people that they started this project together. A country is n like, like Nigeria is not a place where you think you can run based only on your integrity. You need to spread you know, your tentacles. You need to accommodate people. You need to accommodate ideas. The ideas of 1984 is not going to run Nigeria in year 2018. But uh, generally, the, this government is not doing badly. But there are too much of lapses that are embarrassing. Like the last one they did, it was obvious that they had a list long before now, and they were rushed into approving of that list. And they did not do anything, you know, to cross-check again. It's a serious embarrassment when a nation appoints, you know, about eight dead uh, people into uh, boards and parastatus, while there are intellectual, agile, willing, ready, you know, endowed people that are capable of running all this. Uh, it's an embarrassment. It's not something that you can defend. And there are lots of it like that. Let's look at the issue of um, uh, the uh, Aso Rock Clinic that the wife of the president mentioned. The woman did not know that the kind of accident that happened to his son was going to happen to him when, he, he made noise, when she made noise about the Aso Rock Clinic, you know, and look at it now. Is it not obvious? I am sure that when that happened, president, the president didn't do much because we don't not hear anything about it. Or you want to look at the cabinet, some of the members of the cabinet that are embarrassing him. He does not take, you know, critical steps at the critical time until the government is embarrassed. So 
some of the managers of the president needs to uh, sit down with him, and some of his political allies that worked for him when we were voting shouldn't run away from him. They need to accommodate his uh, person, his personality. But the, the truth of the matter is that the government is more uh, you know, of uh, uh, more reactionary. You know, the government should be more proactive in all ramifications. The government is always reacting and reacting and reacting. In fact, some people would put um, the blame of economic recession into uh, the issue of, you know, it's been reactionary, that things that he ought to do immediately, he came on board, he didn't do. Like the delay in the appointment of ministers and all that, you know, all these things we make uh, the economy look uh, unstable to investors and all that. And, you know, it was alleged that there was serious capital flight. So if we continue like that, we'll just be reacting to issues and it's not going to all go well. A yeah, very big thank you to our guests from Ibadan, Comrade Wale Akiremi, the chairman of the Senior Staff um, Association of Nigerian Universities, Sanwa University of Ibadan Chapter. Many thanks for being a part of Galaxy today. Uh, just to remind you, I'm seeing your comment already, uh, you're reacting on Facebook. Just to remind you again that uh, you can be a part of this discussion. What you think the president should do in 2018? Uh, react, uh, send a message, uh, questions, whatever you want to um, ask, uh, just send on uh, the numbers now scrolling on your screen or social media using the hashtag uh, Galaxy today. Uh, we'll still have um, Barrister Wokedi here with us in the studio. Now, Barrister, you just heard um, him talk about uh, efficiency on the part of government. Uh, he was reacting to the purported list that, that we saw in December, where apparently uh, most of the people, or some of the people on that list, are not leaving. So how do we begin to ensure better efficiency on the part of um, government in 2018? I think uh, the people working with the president should be reassessed. The president should uh, reassess people working with him because, um, like the comrade that spoke from Brother rightly put it, it was a very big embarrassment because people uh, are paid to work, they are, they, are, they, are, they are in the offices to work and not to merely occupy the office and enjoy the, I mean, the preference of that office in the delivery of the office. It's for them to work. So it was quite a national embarrassment. In fact, it exposed a lot about the government. For me, anybody saying that the government, this government is a serious government, uh, should be doubted. Because there is no how a serious government should prepare a list two years down the line. And then that list was sent to the president for, for, for his approval. And they did not bother to look at the list again. And, and uh, what well, quite embarrassing is the fact that some of the people that died, they even do the, the, the spokesperson to the president, send them condolence messages. Femi Adishina sent a message for one or two or three of them when they departed. So the, the government should be aware. The elites that supposed you have to proofread. So I'm, I'm wondering the people that actually populated the, 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 the workforce of the, of, the, of the president. And this, this level of uh, embarrassment should have been followed with immediate action. But now we should have heard that the president has sacked so, so and so and so person. I mean, the, the, the man that spoke from the same age, age has nothing to do with action. Mm. I talk, if you're talking about age, is he a boxer? Is he a, a, a Joshua that is in the ring? It's your word, it's your action. It's not your physical fitness. You're not going there. Even the man that was, uh, that was removed from, from uh, Zimbabwe, Gaddafi, was still very, very active. Even, uh, even uh, almost, uh, almost getting up to 100. He was, still, he was still active in his actions. So it's your word. We elected as the president. We don't elect you because you can run and fight and start jumping up and go to Olympic and win us gold medal. No, it's for you to give direction, give order, give instruction. That's why you are the chief executive. Your award becomes an action. Remove this man, remove this person, remove this person from his duty. That this is an embarrassment. Then I just will begin to believe you. But did he do that? Have we heard of anything going on with that issue? Have we heard of anybody about to be punished or be punished? Have we heard about anybody being, being, being even suspended because of that action? Nothing will happen. Does that require him to be, to be under 20 or 34 and he will do that? No. The president is just like disappointing people. And the people voted him because they believe he can buy it. No, because I always think that uh, people voted Buhari because of uh, 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 corruption. People not vote Buhari just because of corruption alone. They voted him because of somebody they believe that can buy it when people okay, become fine. corrupt. I want, I want so to it's take, a big embarrassment. I want to take it from people there. Should go, people have to go down the for that. fight against corruption. Now, but we have Abuja standing by right now. Frank THA is the executive director of Citizens Advocacy for Social and Economic Rights. I'm Keisha. 
Uh, thanks for being a part of Galaxy today. Let us talk about um, fight against corruption vis-a-vis uh, -vis from where we are coming from 2017 and 2018. How better way can we, you know, fight this battle? Uh, thank you very much, and uh, it's a pleasure uh, being here. And once again, I want to share the Happy New Year greetings with everybody out there. Now, um, the fight against corruption, the best way we can tackle it, from the outset, we have always said, is a systemic matter. It, it, it's beyond, uh, you know, this, uh, I'll use the term, this fire brigade approach, this uh, playing to the gallery, appearing to, to, to act in such a way that uh, you can have uh, a, a, a accolades or a applause from, the, from those who are sitting in the gallery that you're doing well. Whereas, in fact, we haven't uh, moved uh, in any way forward in terms of progress or development uh, against the fight against, uh, against the fight, uh, uh, in the fight against corruption. Uh, when we say systemic, you have to appreciate that that includes the, 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 the justice, uh, the, the, the criminal justice system, and then even a, a cultural reorientation about what it means, uh, what, what public service means, and that when access to public resources uh, does not translate to uh, plundering such resources for, for, for personal gain. So the fact that we haven't seen this government, this administration, hasn't undertaken a systemic you know, approach in the fight against corruption has uh, made us not to uh, realize any progress in, in that regard. And it has been unfortunate for us as a people and as a country. Okay, that's so good to know, sir. Thank you so much. But um, looking at people's reaction, a whole lot of people are so disappointed about uh, this present government. And um, they actually feel that, um, or let me say, they expect their expectations about this government is so, so high. And the fear that 2019 is just by the corner. What would you suggest to Nigerians? What should be our attitude at a time like this? Our attitude towards um, the present government, our attitude towards, um, I mean, I'm talking about how best we can support our citizens because we, they say that it takes not just one person to make a village, but it takes everyone to make Nigeria a better place. What should be the attitude of we citizens? You know, I, I'm happy you asked that question uh, about attitudes. That is, how should Nigerians begin to view public service, begin to view government, begin to view the political space? Uh, you know, our attitude has to be that of, uh, firstly, the sincerity that begins on the part of the leadership. We, you cannot have an overbloated, uh, you know, exclusive lease being handled by the uh, federal government. And the federal government will not take responsibility for all of those things, items that are on that list, and will still turn out, turn back to say Nigerians or certain Nigerians or certain group of Nigerians are frustrating the democratic process or frustrating the, the dividends of democracy in terms of social, economic, and political stability and progress and all of that. Now. The, we have to approach governance with a sense of responsibility. That is, what's my job? What's my duty on the part of government and on the part of citizens? Citizens should prepare to vote. Citizens should prepare to take their political destiny in their hands, to say, look, we have elected this government because this is what we expect this particular administration to achieve. And when it does not, citizens should also rise up, not in terms of, um, you know, violent uh, uprising, but political uprising by saying, look, we will sack you in 2019 or we will give you another term, term in the coming year, I mean, the coming uh, political dispensation for what you have done well or for what you have not done well. You know, so uh, the attitude should be that citizens should get become more conscious that, look, sovereignty actually belongs to the people. But the people have been so, you know, so un, un, unconscious, I would say, so ignorant, so uninformed about the fact that they own this country, government and Nigeria as a setting exist for them, for their welfare, for their security. 
Anything short of that should it means that they should now come out and say, look, something has gone wrong and we've got to do we've got to change it. This set of people do not understand the agenda of governance and uh, that governance is for our welfare. You can't tell us that governance has been for the people's welfare when they can't get fuel, 